And I'm officially behind schedule. Yay! This is my third five star of just this month. That's the new plan. I think it's now doable. I'm currently on my tenth book for the month. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new, I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. We are on week number four of Magicopathon round four. Crazy, I know, I can't believe we're already on the final full week of the Magicopathon round four. And I'm officially behind schedule. Yay! <laughs> um, so this week I am semi giving myself the challenge to read 200 pages a day because I need to read these four books this week to stay on track with my TBR. So let's do a little bit of a rundown. Last week I only managed to read one book and start another so technically I'm still in Animal Kingdom and for Animal Kingdom I need to read one more book and that is for the Attraction of Flight of Passage to read a five star prediction which I'm currently in the middle of and just coming up to the 100 page mark and enjoying it so far. This is the first book within the companion series of, I think it's just called the When in Rome series, but I've read Practice Makes Perfect, which I gave a five star this year. And I wasn't sure on this one when I first started reading it, but now the sisters are back. I love the sisters in, in Practice Makes Perfect. And now they're back, they've just been, re they've just been introduced for like the first time because this is the first book. Um, I am loving it again. So yeah, very easy to read, digestible, should be quick to fly through. And then that'll be Animal Kingdom done and I'll be on to my last park where I have three books to read and they're all fairly chunky. So I'll be moving on to Epcot as well this week. For Epcot we have the attraction and I'm going to be riding Cosmic Galaxy, Gardens of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind which is to read a bit of a fast paced plot. I'm going to be reading an F1 romance because an F1 romance will definitely be fast paced. Um, this is Cross the Line by Simone Santali. And then for show, I'll be watching Voice of Liberty to read a book with a beautiful cover. And I'll be reading this YA book called A Dark Inheritance, which is kind of like a gothic horror sort of mystery book. Very kind of like different from the recent books I've been reading. So it might be a nice ch change of pace. And for the snack for Food and Wine Booth, I'll be reading Iris Kelly Doesn't Date by Ashley Herring Blake. I might be reading this one. I'm going to see how I feel near the end of the week. See how burnt out I am because... This was a random choice I got given in my TBR video, but I might re-randomise for this prompt and see what other book we might get because this is like a 400 page book and I'm not sure whether I have the commitment in me right now to read a 400 page book. And also when I announced I was going to be reading this for this prompt, someone in the comments did say that this series was better to read in order and this is the third book in the Delilah Green Doesn't Care series i don't know what the the kind of series is actually called um but it's ashley herring blake's like adult rom-com series with delilah green doesn't care astra parker doesn't fail and iris kelly doesn't date and they said it was better to read them all in order so now i'm a little bit apprehensive on reading this one before i read the other two so we'll see how we go but obviously my first port of call is to finish animal kingdom prompts and get out of animal kingdom um, and hopefully finish this one. If I want to read all of these four books this week, that will mean I need to read 205 pages a day, which potentially could be doable. Like they're all romances. This one is a YA as well. So like it could be doable, but I'm also got a cold and I'm not feeling the best, <coughs> if you couldn't tell. <laughs> so yeah we'll see how we go i'm currently live on my channel in the set in the second sprint we've got 24 minutes left of a 45 minute sprint so i'm going to sit back down and read some more of this but i just wanted to start this week's vlog and yeah i'll keep posted hopefully it'll turn into a little reading 200 pages a day challenge fingers crossed pages in this could be a five star happy tuesday i'm still losing my voice so bear with me but i didn't read the 200 pages like i wanted to yesterday but i did get a decent chunk into when in rome i got 130 
157 pages into When in Rome, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I can't wait to delve back into it today. It's coming up to 6.30 now, Mark is just making dinner. I'm going to sit down on the sofa for a read for a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I would like to get this book finished today. I've got halfway. I feel like I could do it if I put my mind to it. And it's really easy and simple to fly through. Um, so hopefully I can get this finished because I'd like to leave Animal Kingdom now. I think this is the longest I spent on a park because usually if I had any carryover from previous weeks, I've usually binged the remainder of the book on a Monday so I can start fresh on a Tuesday. This has been the first week where I haven't been able to do that. So I'd really like to get this book finished today. I have a feeling I'll be able to um, and that'll be great progress for me. So hopefully we can do that and I'll keep you updated. Happy Wednesday. I didn't finish my book last night, but I did finish it today on my lunch break and it came out at a five star. This is my third five star of just this month when previously I've only rated two books five star across the rest of the year. So from January to June, I only rated two books five star and in July I've had three. <laughs> And I'm correct on my prediction. This was for the prompt of flight passage to read a five star prediction for Animal Kingdom. And it was a five star, just. I still prefer Practice Makes Perfect. That came out as a higher rated five star than this one, but still incredible, absolutely loved it. So much fun, loved the characters, the writing, the atmosphere, just the whole romance, the amount of like sexual tension, banter, just chef's kiss perfection. Carabash is about to die, but I finished Animal Kingdom. I can move on to Epcot which I have three books to read for um, and I'm kind of feeling another non-romance so I'm going to go for my show prompt for Voice of Liberty to read a beautiful cover and this is a YA sort of like horror fantasy gothic sort of thriller called The Dark Inheritance about a young boy who's about to inherit a family fortune um, and something goes wrong with like the money transfer or something so it sounds interesting and I need to get started because it's almost 400 pages so I'm gonna go sit down on the sofa now and start this book and officially start on my last park for Magic Optimon round four. <laughs> I've decided to switch up my TBR for the rest of Magical Hobbathon. So the plan is now. I got 16 pages into this book and I'm just like, I'm not vibing with it. Um, I'm sure it'll be great, <laughs> hopefully, when I'm not gonna rush through it just for the sake of trying to tick off a book. So I'm going to DNF this one. This was for the show prompt for Voice of Liberty to read a book with a beautiful cover. So instead, because I still need to complete the attraction show and snack prompt in Epcot, the plan is now to keep across the line on my TBR for the attraction, which I picked Cosmic Rerun to read a book with a fast paced plot. Um, and this will be a fast paced plot. It's a romance. It's an F1 romance. So this is staying on the Epcot TBR. What is now changing is I'm going to double up on my snack and show prompt. So for that to work, I need to switch out the prompts I'm completing. So for the show, I'm still going to go for Voices of Liberty to read a book with a beautiful cover. And then for the snack, instead of going and doing the food and wine at Booth, I'm going to go and do Club Call, which is to read a book set in a different country. And I'm going to go for Night Shift by Annie Crown. This is, once again, another romance, and that's what I just need. I have Friday, kind of today, because it is Friday if I didn't say, I don't think I did. And I won't be able to read tonight, because I'm going to see Deadpool and Wolverine in the cinema. So I really have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to read three more books because this was also on my original TBR and this is another 400 page book. So reading three 400 page books in like five days, I just don't think it's physically possible anymore, hence the switch to the TBR. So this one's staying, these two are getting removed and to replace these two I'm switching it out for this one to still watch Voice of Liberty to read a book with a beautiful cover and then for my snack get a drink from Club Cool and read a book set in a different country because this author is American so I'm assuming it's going to be set in America which is a different country to the one I'm currently in which is England, um, the UK. So that's a new plan and this one sounds a lot more appealing and I'm actually going to probably start this one now DNFing The Dark Inheritance 16 pages in which is fine, I don't care. I'm probably going to start this one just to kind of like get me back to reading because I didn't read anything yesterday and I do feel like my reading pace is definitely slowing down so I think I definitely do need something fast paced and plus this one is also on Kindle Unlimited so if I want to read it on my Kindle and switch up the format a little bit I can. So these are the two new books on my Epic Caught TBR and the last two books I need to read for Magical Hopathon. Hopefully I can now do it because three books was getting a little daunted so I'm glad I've managed to switch out. So that's the new plan. I think it's now doable. Wish me luck and I'll keep posted.
managed to read exactly pretty much half of my book yesterday. I read a lot in the sun because Mark moved the chairs into the shade for me, which was lovely. So I really enjoyed our garden yesterday whilst reading a really quick, easy, bingeable book. This is nothing amazing, it's nothing bad. I'm enjoying it. It'll probably be like a 3.5, four star, depending on the ending. I do enjoy the characters. Um, and I definitely feel connected to it and I don't know if that's because I do understand the world of F1 before going into it so I, I understand some of the struggles that the main one of the main characters Dev who's the F1 driver is going through I really enjoy their relationship it's very much fully kind of like sexual tension at this point so basically follows our two main characters Dev Anderson who is an F1 driver and what is the other main character's name? Willow I can't remember her surname but Willow who's our female protagonist and Willow is Deb's best friend Oakley's little sister so obviously we have this kind of like not allowed to date each other situation but there's sexual chemistry between the two of them and our main character Willow has just recently graduated from a sports journalist kind of like uni degree and she can't find a job anywhere so when Dev's publicist kind of outs him and he fires her he needs someone to rebuild up his reputation in the F1 world otherwise he might not get a seat for next year um, and then he hires Willow to help kind of put her back on her feet and to help her out in terms of her career and get her kind of like a foot through the door in her dream career which is obviously sports journalism so he and so Willow ends up being hired as Dev's kind of like personal kind of like PR social media manager to get his reputation back up to standard and there they'll see kind of like really working together closely and sexual tension kind of builds from there and you do kind of focus quite a lot on the f1 situation because it is dual perspective so you do kind of follow dev as he's kind of navigating his current season in f1 is he going to get a seat for next year his kind of like tension between him and his teammate and the f1 team that he drives for so if you're not a massive f1 fan i really don't think you're going to get much out of this book but because i am an f1 fan i do understand the kind of like world that the f1 kind of is and it's quite funny that you can tell that this also does know f1 as well because some of the characters like the side characters of the different f1 drivers and the different f1 teams do have drama that the real world actually has had um so it's quite interesting and i am really enjoying it so i'm gonna hopefully binge the rest of this today because i would like to get this book finished today and then start on night shift for monday tuesday wednesday and that then is the end of this readathon which is crazy so i'm going to keep this vlog going until the end of the month so wednesday and get this video up for you thursday instead of my usual tuesday upload just so there isn't like a tiny little bit of like a monday tuesday wednesday that you're going to miss out on so hopefully you guys enjoy that and this will be like a super extra long vlog but i just wanted to kind of like round up the readathon as a whole nicely and get the end of the readers on into a vlog um, and that means continuing on this vlog for a little bit longer so hopefully i'll get these two books read i did check this book is no longer on ku so i will have to read it physically which is fine i have the physical copy of it that's not an issue whatsoever i just kind of wanted to read something on my kindle to make it me read quicker but it's fine i'm sure i'm going to be able to read this one quickly anyway i don't even know what the page count is but it doesn't look much bigger than like 350 yeah, just over 300 pages, 320. So this should be really easy to fire through over the next couple of days. And then that'll be Epcot done and the readathon done. And that means the way I plan this readathon, it finishing means I'll be a month away from going to Disney, which is crazy. Um, so I'll keep you posted. Hopefully I'll come in soon and say this book is finished and done and I'll be well on the way to completing Epcot. But right now it's just gone 8.30 and the gymnastics has started for the Olympics. So let's go watch that. Another book complete. Happy Monday, this is the last few days of this vlog because I wanted to take it all the way up until the end of Magic Hopathon, which finishes in three days and no word of a lie, I'm a little bit excited to be done reading at the pace I'm currently reading at. So I'm currently on my 10th book for the month, or I'm about to start my 10th book for the month, which is crazy. This will be the most I've read across an entire month for the entire year. My highest reading year so far has been January of nine books and even then I read quite a few audio books, I read some graphic novels. So so this is the first month I've read 10 solid, like 300 page plus books 
to get to this point. So I've been, I'm definitely feeling a little bit burnt out with reading, but I have one more book left to finish. I did finish yesterday, Cross the Line, giving it a 3.5 stars. This is definitely a fast paced book. This book is like 384 pages and I binged it across the entire weekend, which I'm very, very chuffed about. Um, I did really enjoy this one. This is definitely enjoyable if you like the world of F1, even as, as I was describing it to Mark, he's very much like, I don't think you would have enjoyed that book a couple of years ago. And no, I probably wouldn't have because I feel like a lot of the F1 stuff would have gone over my head. Um, but I really enjoyed the F1 part of this book, which I feel like sometimes when it comes to a sports romance, you don't really want the sport aspect. Like the hockey books I'm reading, like the L. Kennedy series. I don't really care for the hockey stuff. I just really enjoy the characters and the romance. Whereas with this, I really felt like F1 enhanced the whole plot as a whole. And therefore, knowing the world of F1, I feel like I benefited from it a little bit more. I thought it was overwritten ever so slightly. I definitely think didn't think it needed to be 384 pages. I feel like maybe 340, 350 would have been good. Definitely felt like it could have been, some scenes could have been cut out and you could have still got like the overall gist. But yeah, I enjoyed it, I had fun. Definitely recommend it if you're looking for an F1 romance. Definitely think this is a solid one. Um, and yeah, overall I enjoyed it. And definitely a fast paced book, which was obviously, the reason I picked this book was for a fast paced book for Cosmic Rewind, the attraction. So yes, I'm finally on to my show and snack prompt. Love Boys of Liberty for the show to read a book with a beautiful cover and I do absolutely adore this cover and for the snack of Club Call to read a book set in a different country and this is set in America and obviously I'm based in the UK so yeah final book there's only 320 pages so if I read about 100 pages a day I can do it easily so that is the plan I haven't read anything yet today but I really don't think this book's going to take me too long to read whatsoever so hopefully I can get a lot of this read this evening sat on the sofa with Mark but we have started Too Hot to ha Handle the next season of that and I love me some Too Hot to Handle um so we might be watching a few episodes of that as well so hopefully I'll get a lot of reading in but I'll keep you posted this vlog will be going on until Wednesday so yeah let's get this final book read. Happy last day of the readathon. I'm gonna make this update quick because it's just gone eight o'clock on July 31st and I still have 100 pages to read of my last book for the readathon. I'm about that far through. It's taken me about half hour to read 50 pages so I should be able to get this book done in the next hour hopefully because obviously that's when I go to bed and that officially obviously ends my readathon. Um, I'm not enjoying this book. I've written some notes and I'm just gonna kind of like say the notes out loud to you because yeah I don't like this book. I don't like the writing. I don't like the characters. I don't like the plot. I don't like the pacing. <laughs> but luckily it's a romance and it's just really easy to read. But yeah, overall, I'm not really enjoying it. And here are my reasonings. It feels like it's very overwritten. It's trying to make a point of this being like on the nose with the main character being a massive bookworm and therefore knowing some of the book tropes like miscommunication, etc. But it's too on the nose and the main character is getting really annoying with kind of like how her life is panning out like a book. And she keeps kind of like referencing, 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 why well, can't I say that word? referencing that um and yeah it's just getting a bit like over repetitive and therefore I feel like I'm not written that well I feel like there are better books out there that make fun of the book world or just like not even make fun of it but kind of understand it better i.e a novel love story by Ashley Poston and just other books out there that do this sort of plot better the main character I find very hypocritical <laughs> For example, she hates the miscommunication trope in books, yet her and her love interest have such a bad way of communicating and she is aware of this but she doesn't change the fact that this is the way that her romance is going in her own kind of like story, yet she hates that trope in books so why is she making it, like why is she being so stubborn in not talking and communicating to her love interest? That her thoughts and her feelings when that's her least favorite trope in books yet she's purposely doing it because she's not willing to communicate with her love interest because she's being that stubborn yeah no thank you she's really annoying me the sex scenes aren't that great i've read some great sex scenes this past month with the l kennedy off campus series and just other books i've read this month and this is just really lackluster and a little bit cringy i feel like the characters have no depth and we have no background on them so when it feels like we're meant to know loads about kind of like why they're doing the things they are, we don't have really any context. And I feel like the characters are just falling very, very flat. And because of this, I feel like you're meant to swoon over the romance, but you have no reasonings to do that because you don't know the characters well enough. And then the plot just feels very rushed 
very kind of like head first in. This book basically is two main characters who have kind of like a one night stand in a library. So our main character is a massive bookworm. She takes the Friday night shifts at the college campus library because she doesn't like partying. She's not like other girls and that trope is mentioned and discussed. And the only bit about the book that I've laughed at is when her friend puts her in her place because of that trope. And her friend basically calls her out on her bullshit. And I'm like, yes, thank you, someone like is paying attention to this girl being an absolute like know-it-all and just oh no ick I don't like it um so yeah you have that main character Kelly Kennedy I don't even know her name I'm literally skim reading the descriptions and just reading the dialogue at this point um and a kind of like popular sports basketball player comes into the library because he needs help with his poetry homework and they get to discussing she takes him to like the poetry section and then they just randomly start making out and they have this like weird connection instantly and this happened in the first like 18 pages and I'm like this is not realistic this isn't even believable even if it was meant to not be realistic it's just not very believable so I just feel like the plot's very rushed and yeah those are all my rants about this book literally the only kind of like benefits is that it's very very quick to read so hopefully I'll get the rest of it done very very shortly and it can be fine done and dusted <laughs> and I can just get it over and done with because I'm not enjoying it it's been like a two star because the only kind of like redeeming element at the minute is that her best friend is calling her out on all her bullshit but still not kind of like warranting enough for me to actually enjoy the book so yeah not loving this one unfortunately but I'll keep posted I have been rambling for five minutes so I'm gonna go off and finish this book and then probably at the weekend before I upload this video I'll come down and sit down and go through all my stats and all the books I read across this whole month and just kind of like round out magic font as a whole but just wanted to say quickly thank you for anyone who's participated this month whether you've read one book for it two books for it read every single prompt done all the parks just one park two parks whatever kind of like participation energy that you've had during this month I really do appreciate all your support on this readathon I absolutely love hosting it it's a lot of effort so I do really appreciate everyone kind of like gathering together and making it a really community feel this month we've added in a discord which has been so fun to chat to everyone on and it just really felt so wholesome this month so thank you everyone everyone for your love and support and your participation in this round of the readathon I've really had a wonderful wonderful time um but one I'm ready to stop reading this much because I am done with reading for a little bit but we've got the last 100 pages let's go I'm just here to wrap up this vlog and give you the stats for Magic Hopathon round four. It's a little bit later now, it's the 3rd of August, um, but I just wanted to come on and finish this vlog, say I did finish my last book for Epcot on the last day, reading 220 pages of this book to get it done on the last day, just to say that I completed all four parks and gone to every single place I wanted to go during Magic Hopathon round four. And I didn't love this book sadly I gave it a two star as I said uh, previously all of my kind of like things I didn't love about it stayed true right until the end I just thought this book was okay my camera battery is dying great but overall I read a total of 10 books across the month of July which is my best reading month so far this year which is crazy and I had three five stars which is also absolutely incredible I can't believe I rated so many books that high of a rating but it was so much fun to find so many favorites this month sorry I'm multitasking because my camera battery is about to die but in total I read a total of like 3,000 and something pages let me quickly check my core pile I read a total of 3,296 pages across the month and I am so glad to be done with reading I'm not going to lie I've only read 30 pages across the entire month so far in August and it's August 3rd and you know what I'm just really enjoying watching the Olympics chilling out and not constantly thinking that I should be reading instead of doing other things but if you partook or partake in, partake, partook in this round of Magic Hopathon, thank you so, 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 so much for all your support, your love and your contributions to this readathon. I really did have an absolutely amazing time hosting it once again. I cannot believe I'm now less than a month away from going on my own Disney World trip and I cannot wait. This readathon did really get me excited, but I cannot wait to just binge loads of Disney vlogs this last month prepping for my own trip so thank you if you partook and I hope you all enjoyed yourselves and had a whirl of a time I certainly did and yeah I'll leave this vlog here if you enjoyed this video and in, and enjoyed the entire Magic Hopathon make sure you give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe down below to see future content from me I do anything from weekly reading vlogs monthly TBRs monthly wrap ups any other, any other bush content that you can think of if you haven't had a chance make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any and I'll see you in my next video bye guys